In this final section of our course, before you head to the evaluation, we're going to talk about observational grading, which is, again, another way for us to think about grading in our classrooms. Observational grading is a great way for us to um, grade students on a process over a product, and um, it's looking more at kind of task behaviors or behaviors over time that students are performing. This is great for times when students are presenting or even performing. Um, it's great for our CTE courses where students are um, completing activities, whether that be seating a dental patient or uh, doing a manicure. Or maybe it's performing some kind of service on a car like an oil change. It's also great for our special needs students who may be working on goals that include accomplishing tasks. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this. So as we're taking a look at observational grading, be thinking about something that maybe you might want to use observational grading for in your course. What you do with observational grading is you set up an assessment and then you're able to submit for a student. To do that, you would go into the assessment, click on grading. In the top right corner, you'll see a little section that says by student or by question. You'll want to do by student. Find the student that you're looking to evaluate and click the three dots at the end of their name, and then choose start attempt. That's how you're going to open that assessment, and I'll walk you through that step by step in just a minute. You can use a rubric rubric, a rubric format, or a short answer format for notes, and I'll show you those both in the example. And then you don't want to publish this one. You want to leave it unpublished so students won't be able to interact with it because you're the one doing the grading. And then when you're finished, you can publish it so students can see their grade on that um, assessment. So let's go ahead and take a look at observational grading inside of Schoology. We'll just use one example. So I work with the health careers teachers, and one of the CTE teachers teaches dental courses. So I borrowed a rubric from um, one of our dental teachers. So in this Basically, what the teacher would be doing is observing as the student goes through the procedures of seating a dental patient. And rather than entering this on a paper rubric in front of them, they can enter it in Schoology so the student gets those feedback, the feedback and grades immediately. So you have kind of the an ad tech section here where it gives some gentle um, reminders or information. And then we start getting into the point values. And just like in that student self-assessment, I've gone ahead and adjusted the used alternate answers to assign um, percentage points for each of these. So as the teacher goes through, they'll be able to choose. And the nice thing is on the submit for students, um, it looks a little different. You can see all of the questions at one time, which is really nice. So let's take a look at it in that um, submit for a student view, and I'll show you how you can access that. So I've copied that assessment into my sandbox course, and I'm just going to check a couple settings. When I do this, submissions are automatically disabled, so I want to go ahead and, and enable submissions so that I, as the teacher, am able to submit it. But I don't want students to be able to see it, so I'm going to uncheck that green circle so it's not published to students. Remember, you'll want to have a due date and a category, and if depending on whether you want to, if you want it to go into TAC, you can leave this checked. If you don't want it to go to TAC, you can always uncheck it. And so this is going to be my assessment, and I'm just going to save those changes. And now when I go in here and I click on grading, and then up at the top right, I want to make sure it's by student. I have these three dots appear at the end of the student's name, and I can click Start Attempt. So what I'm doing is I'm starting Al's attempt, and this really just means that I'm going to have access to submit for Al. And once it loads, you'll see here, it's a nice single page view, which is really great. And at the very end, 
I have added some comments and feedback. So as I'm going through, I can skip down to the end to add those comments and feedback about why maybe they earned points or missed points. And as you kind of take a look, you can see that these are just action steps along the way. Show play, patient to place where personal articles, um, seat patient in dental chair and invite patient to sit all the way back. So it's, it's really a procedural thing where students are going through the steps and I, as the teacher, as I'm watching them, can add those points. And again, I can publish this after the fact so that students have access to their score on the rubric as well as the comments and feedback. And then all I have to do is click submit at the end for that grade to be recorded. Now, I don't know if it's going to let me submit because I didn't choose answers on all those questions. So because I added that comments and feedback, it will say needs grading, even though I did add, um, a, I made that question zero points. So all I have to do is come down here to the bottom. And you'll see I can change that to a zero. And that's saved. And so now when I go in, when I go back to grading, Al's is complete and he got zero because I didn't check any of those. So um, it'll automatically grade it for you. But basically, again, you're taking a look at a student's process over the product. What steps are they taking to complete the task? Uh, so this might be great for some of you, especially those who teach some kind of non-conventional courses. But I think there are some great ways that you could work this in for students doing presentations or skits and things of that nature um, if you're in a course subject area. So just a quick recap. We took a look at um, students doing self-assessment. So they're using metacognitive questions to get students thinking about how they learn best. You can have students use a rubric to self-grade an assignment, project, or test so that they're getting a part in that conversation about their grades. Grades aren't happening to them. They have a voice in that. And an end of week exit ticket is a great way for students to reflect on their learning for the week and set goals for the future to keep continuing that cycle of improvement and better understanding how they learn best. With observational grading, you have the opportunity to create a task analysis assessment. You can turn a rubric for a presentation into an assessment on Schoology, and you can create a data collection assessment for students in your class. Again, lots of different things you can do with both self-assessment and observational grading where those grades are recorded in Schoology if you want them to be or just used for conversations with students for improvement. Thanks so much for watching the final module. Please remember that you will need to complete the evaluation in order to receive credit for this course in the next section. Bye, guys.